you have a situation of 17 government, 17 coalition, divided coalitions, disagreeing with each other when you have to have policy coherence. Credibility means you decide and then you speak. Today in the Eurozone is the opposite. Everybody is talking, there is a cacophony of voices and no decision is being taken. And the steps that have to be taken to avoid the disorderly situation are massive. You have to restore growth and competitiveness, it means the ECB has to reverse its policy tightening, its rates. That was a big mistake uh, to raise uh, rates twice uh, earlier this year by the ECB. You know, I think this is uh, Jean-Claude uh, Trichet's last meeting, and it would be very helpful for the new uh, uh, ECB president, uh, Draghi, if they would do something about interest rates. I really would hope they'd take back both of those rates cut. It, w it would be helpful if they, if they even go farther than that. I doubt if he will, but uh, uh, we're certainly, I, I think that would be very very helpful to the process. There's a, there's a slightly inverted yield curve in Europe there, which is uh, also not helping the financial institutions. Sometimes you do have to recognize the reality of what's going on in the markets, even if you don't like it, uh, and then move on. And that's what's not really happening in the euro area. Um, and it does seem that euro area decision-making processes are really feeling the strain. Um, but I do think we have to be very careful about what we really expect central banks to do with monetary policy in this environment. It's not, the, uh, it's not the panacea. It's not going to solve all our problems. Where you've got structural problems in public finances and banks, you need to deal with them directly. The European Central Bank has this, has this policy framework where they have the two-pronged approach. One is uh, providing all sorts of help to the banking industry, and the other one is, is uh, moving interest rates according to their economic adjustments, so uh, to their uh, economic expectations. So the economic expectations have certainly come down. The question is if they have come down significantly enough to justify reversing their rate course. Yes, it's causing great strains inside the ECB, and we've seen two, uh, the two senior German representatives leave and resign because they're unhappy with the way policy is going. And they feel that the ECB is being forced into taking essentially a fiscal role in the absence of government action. Um, from my point of view, thank God they've, they've stepped up to the plate and done it, or we really would have had a banking collapse in Europe already. Um, I think what they need to do uh, is, is, is to sort the Greek problem out, first of all. Um, they, they've done successive rounds which have not really seized the nettle. And that's been, uh, that, that's been drawing confidence out of the rest of the countries. And secondly, they need to put a lot more capital into their banks uh, in parallel to that. Can they do that? Um, I've always thought they would in the end do it, but I mean, they really are on the brink of disaster. One of the things we feel very adamant about is that obviously everything as regards the banking system has deteriorated quite significantly. And there is, I think, now a general consensus, and we are amongst them, um, that what are they probably going to do tomorrow is increase the liquidity provisions, for instance, by rolling out the re-rolling out the 12-month um, tenders for liquidity to the banks, and probably also going to restart the covered bond program. Uh, it's, a, it's a buying program uh, they, they had earlier in the, in the crisis, which they uh, suspended now for, for the time being. So that is what we think is going to happen tomorrow, and probably rates are going to be moved, um, if, if at all, at a later stage. We want the ECB to cut rates uh, this Thursday. I think the, the inflation clearly is a lagging indicator, so it has not uh, a lot of relevance. But uh, if you look at the PMI data, the manufacturing data also coming out today is confirming that the, the European area is on the brink uh, of a recession. And in previous instances, with the PMIs uh, below 50, the ECB has actually cut interest rates. So I think from an economic point of view, there's absolutely no reason why not to cut. And uh, it's, it's maybe a political question whether Trichet will sort of announce that or hint at the cut uh, because it's his last meeting. But I think that was, would be the best thing for him to do to actually already make the cut now and the bold cut by 50 basis points. The fourth quarter will be uh, very decisive. Uh, we need to see some action in the next one or two months or it will be probably too late to avoid the recession.